Eight Fenton, how are you, sir? Very good, thank you, mate. How are you? Jolly good. Uh, it's been a while. Um, I just checked back through my photos just to see when we actually last met, and that was at uh, that was the seventh of June, apparently, twenty twenty one. And that was, was it? at yeah, and that was at your at your studio. So time yeah. flies. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that was I can't believe it was that long ago. Well, listen, I don't want to I don't want to flatter you or or make you blush or anything, but you're looking really well. Thank you've, you. You look you look younger. <laughs> Uh, no surgery yet. Uh, <laughs> I I absolutely will consider it uh, when I, when I need to. But at the moment, I don't need to. It's my birthday actually on Thursday, so um, ah yeah. So I'm um, sort of dreading them now. But anyway, <laughs> there you go. You know, and I, listen, I you know, and I'm not trying to butter you up, but I think you know me as a straight talker. I have some. There are some female uh, subscribers of mine who are very excited about this interview. I'm just, oh, just putting okay. that out there, well, yeah. And a few uh, female friends of mine who do refer to you as eye candy. So I'm just I'm just saying that because it's true. I'm not trying to butter you up. Well, no, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Just send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's brilliant. Well, listen, Aid, we've got quite a bit to cover, but let's let's kick off with something that I think will be a lot of interest to a lot of people who are Aid Fenton fans, and that is you uh, doing the soundtrack for a movie. Or oh, it's a documentary, is that right? Yeah, I, I think last time you were at the studio, I was probably just starting it. That's right. You did mention you were actually working on it, so it's taken. Yeah, a, it so, takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called In the Company of Kings, um, and it's a boxing documentary. But it's not like your standard boxing documentary, where, with uh, which I love, which I love anyway. I'm a big boxing fan, so for me to be able to do this, this the the score for this film with Tim Slade, who's Gary Newman's bass player and um, multi instrumentalist supreme, a very talented man, uh, and having him in the studio makes me appear to be much more musically talented than I actually am. But uh, as ever with these things, you know, it's kind of bringing people together and getting the best performances out of them. And then I guess what I'm really good at is, is sort of putting it all together and, and making something good. Uh, I'm probably doing myself down there and uh, you'll probably tell me off for that. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Everyone else does. But anyway, um, so yeah, the guy that did uh, the Gary Newman documentary, Android in La La Land, uh, Steve Reed, he approached me about this film. He's the director of this film. And as I was saying previously, it's not like your standard boxing documentary where, uh, which also, also seem to have Kings in the title, but yeah, you know, which sort of goes through fight by fight. This is more about the effect that boxing, boxing has on boxers. So mm -hmm. that might be physical. It might be mental or emotional. And it's about the struggle that a lot of boxers have faced even going back to the days of Ali um, with the uh, racial struggles in, in America. So it covers a lot of ground and it's actually quite a dark film. So it's, it, it's you, I wouldn't say you have to be a boxing fan to watch it, but you know, it's, it's quite a, um, it's a, it's a really good work of art that Steve's put together. Um, and, you know, it took me right out of my comfort zone in musically um uh a couple of tracks in a major key which i'm certainly not used to uh, uh, so so yeah that's uh thankfully i had tim on board for that to say no 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 let's let's move it there uh otherwise everything would have sound doom laden i think um but i'm really looking forward to it coming out um tim and i are really proud of the music something different for us um so the plan is at the moment that the premiere is going to be in Philadelphia, where a lot of the film is set in April. I think it's April 1st. Uh, and then there are going to be different premieres in different cities in America, LA, Vegas, New York, uh, Philly, as I say, um, and and obviously London and probably some other cities around, around the world. And then it's going to have an indie cinema run, probably at uh, Picture Houses, um, the Picture House, which is a sort of indie chain around uh, certainly in this country I don't know about other countries definitely in the states um, and then streaming on Apple TV and Amazon are the ones that I know so far um, probably in late April so yeah what's well, it came about really so yeah so this has been sort of uh, in the pipeline for like the last or keeping you busy for the last sort of three years sort of on the sideline 
Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Tim and I did, did did the score probably over a 12-month period. We started it before Steve had finished the filming. So a lot of the filming um, that Steve did, you know, he would send it in and then we'd sort of get a, an idea of what the content was. Um, you know, for example, Muhammad Ali's brother, Rachman Ali, is talking about how much he misses his brother, you know, and... and not about Ali, Ali the fighter. He's talking about his just his brother, you know. And so Tim and I would go, you know, oh my god, this is really sad. And and and, but at the same time, it, you know, he's talking about, you know, what an amazing person he was, what an amazing champion he was. And so the music has to flow from being terribly sad at one point and to sort of uplifting thirty seconds later. So that was kind of how it went really so uh i think between probably t t uh, late 2021 and we probably were working on it probably for 18 months and then it's just a case of uh obviously covid made uh, had a big impact especially uh, and the hollywood strikes had a big impact on being able to get the film distributed um but anyway it's all sorted now so yeah it sees the light of day soon that's brilliant. I just checked out the trailer this morning. As I say, I haven't had um, too much time to research stuff, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you obviously sent me the trailer. And to to you guys watching, just check in the link in the description below. You can check out that trailer. And yeah, it's uh, you know the trailer is about two and a half minutes, and uh, that's eight Fenton sound. That you know, I can hear. Uh, well, I, can hear I the, mean, the, the, that is the the, that is the most uplifting track. That one, yeah, I would yeah. say, probably certainly the most powerful. Um, uh, yeah, but we also had Steve Harris playing on it as well. So I've kept the Gary connections going, you know, good. And 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 uh, Steve, you, you know, added a, another layer of um, loveliness thanks to the Eventide H9. Um, mm. And, and uh, it was, it's just been, you know, it's just brilliant to work on. I, I still find uh, working to picture incredibly re rewarding. I haven't done it for a while. Um, because obviously I've been doing other things, but I, f I find it really rewarding to be able to write a piece of music, and then it's what I think I might have mentioned this to you before. But the reward you get, you get like a double reward for it. So where I'm producing Gary or whoever else, Raven or, or whatever, you know, you get the instant reward of okay, you 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 know, Raven or Gary send a demo and a, and I work it up create some new parts for it or whatever and, and send it back and they go oh my god that's amazing Ho look, hopefully they do that so that's a brilliant that's a wonderful that fantastic reward but with film you also get this thing where the director goes oh that's absolutely brilliant but then when you see it actually working with um with a voiceover or working to picture and how it makes you feel looking at that looking at the film is it is it hitting all the right notes uh, not musically, but emotionally, um, then that's an added sort of reward that you get from from working to picture, and I really enjoy that. It's good to see you've kept the you've kept the Newman family uh, absolutely <laughs> in, yeah. in the picture. But you know, um, you know, I'm fascinated by movie scores and stuff. And if, just to sort of comment on you saying, you know, that they obviously it, it was a dark film. I could not imagine you uh not <laughs> as yeah, i joke so. as, I mean, as i said you're not a dark and uh, i said to people when i mis interviewed you the first time i said contrary to popular belief he's not a miserable moody dark bastard <laughs> no 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 i'm not a lot of people think i am um but i'm 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 honestly not um yeah you're not no but but the film is like like you know when i say it's dark it's not like you know tim and i have done loads of documentaries about serial killers for example and you know when you're doing a documentary like we did previously about Ed Kemper and about, you know, how he did what he did to his mum and all the rest of it and did it to, you know, killed all these people and how he killed them. Mm -hmm. You can go as dark as you like with that. You know, yeah, that is, yeah. you know, yes. full on this, full on distortion and, and make the most horrible noises that you can. Mm. Whereas this film is dark in a, a, a different kind of way. Yeah. Um, but it does have its moments of, of hope as well particularly towards the end of the end of the film and um it just makes you think about how you know these these people who've been battered around the head for 20 years of their life you know are then affected after that you know and and um i guess the 
the darkness in the story comes from some of the some of those stories really absolutely and um i remember when you told me about this enough in, in our interview back in 2001 you, you mentioned this i don't know if we actually i don't know if we actually said it on on film or if you know it was just said behind the scenes you spoke about this and i me being uh, i just said well I, I said i can i can see it being a dark thing because i don't think anyone would get you to compose something like rocky rocky's no, definitely not definitely not definitely not let me not take us off topic here regarding film scores these days hey, there's something that i've sort of paid more attention to over the years and i've noticed obviously how film scores have changed over the years you know if you look at the 60s and the 70s or if you take like the movie psycho for instance that, that shower scene with you know that was quite yeah. iconic but if you fast forward to the to the current days um um soundtracks for movies aren't that anthemic anymore it's almost as if though the music it's not that it's almost like the music sometimes and, and you could um give me your feelings on this it sometimes has to take a step backwards sometimes it's you know sometimes there are scenes where no music's needed so sometimes a sound effect can be a lot more effect than a whole score so to speak yeah absolutely. am i making sense it, it, it's an it, it, no it's perfect sense um and you're quite right you know there are some brilliant horror scores that have done exactly that and and it's an easy trap to fall into when you're composing music for a film because you want to put your stamp on it you know and you you want the music to be a big part of the scene but that's not what it's about and and i think the more experience i've become in it the more you kind of understand that um it's there to support and it's, yes. you know, it's not there to take center stage at all. In yeah, certain, you've got to take your ego out of it. You uh, absolutely and, and have it, to. It's, you, to, it's, it's to tell the story. And I think yeah, that yeah, must yeah, be difficult, some, diff difficult sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of used to it now. So, so, yeah. so it's, you, you know, it's all good. And it just becomes second nature um, um, uh, to do that. But you're absolutely right. I think... Um, I think when Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did the score for The Social Network, however many years ago that was, I think that changed cinema quite a lot, you know, probably um, unwittingly in, in their case. But, um, yeah, I, I just mean that, you know, prior to that, you know, the amazing scores that people, you know, like John Williams do, still, serve, still even now serve an, 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 you know, a great purpose in certain films. But I think what Trent and Atticus did with, with that was write some tracks and then make them work with the picture and it, it mm. i think it opened up the eyes of a lot of directors to think i oh, can't you know it doesn't have to be this mm. orchestral thing or it doesn't have to be these you know these mm. people that have worked on scores for mm. 20 years it can be really really cool sounds sound design and, things uh, like and that, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah absolutely um there's a there's a you know there's a track on the social network album and on the film called hang i think it's called hand covers bruise and it's just three piano notes and i, I remember reading an interview with 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 trent and atticus where they said that it you, you know they at, at no point did they ever think that this three note piano piece which is so incredible you know is ever going to work with this with this with the scene but then it, they just tried it and and it just gave that the opening scene of the social network i think it i think it was this a different feel and and made you made you think about what was going on in the scene which we can't remember what it was but it it made you it that the whole scene felt completely different and I, and i think that 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 kind of approach to film scoring um did change things i really do yeah. um because you know th even people that i know people like gazelle to and you know elizabeth's done and she's really started to do a lot of scores, you know, and, and I think that's all a, I think that's all a result of people like Trent and Atkins doing stuff that is not a traditional film score. Um, mm. And then people think, oh, well, I really love Elizabeth's music. So, we, you know, maybe we mm. could, we could try using her or someone like me or whatever for, 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 for something, you know, because it, mm. That's why a lot of artists have become composers, I think. Yeah. Um, because directors, I think, are more open to giving giving us a try. 
Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's, it, what, when we're talking about movie scores, of course, the name Hans Zimmer always jumps to the top. Yeah, of course. Of my head. Yeah. And um, I watched him on a uh, documentary talking about the film score for Batman, The Dark Knight yeah. Rises. And before then, you know, if you if you take the previous one, uh, which was, I think, who was the, who was that guy who butchered the franchise? Or was it uh, Schumacher? You know, and he apologized for butchering. <laughs> but he had that dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, yeah. no, very orchestral. But now Zimmer explained how it's just dun, 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 dun. then it's got like dun, dun. Yeah. and he says it's just two notes and that's yeah. all it needs yeah exactly and, exactly yeah. i mean you know uh i think he also i saw a documentary it might have been the same one actually where i think he'd got someone to pop he used a, a bow um and, yes. and I think, I think it, yeah, I, I think I this is the same one. Yeah, yeah. I can't it. remember the yeah, actual yeah. process, but it was yeah. one note. And, yeah, yeah. And, it, <laughs> yes. and it scraped a bow along a guitar yeah, yeah. string or something like that. Yeah, but I think also with, with, with Zimmer as well is, you know, I think with like Williams and stuff, I think a lot of it like, you know, like Superman and, and, and Star Wars and, and those kinds of scores, they, they typically are musical. You know, you get the idea that they were composed on a piano. Whereas I think Zimmer often comes to things he approaches them not not necessarily musically but also um uh, more sort of um experimentally like you know he'll use modular synths and as he, he'll have one note playing and then although it's one note playing uh, it, it is the sound that becomes a fundamental part of the score exactly. rather than the melody if you know what yeah. i mean yeah. well it's like what he did with dunkirk as well wasn't it yeah. you know um and 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 the shepherd's tone thing which was used to a massive effect in in that in that film um again it's you know it's one note that everyone thinks is descending or rising mm, and mm, but mm. but uh, and, and that introduces the arrival of the airplanes you know mm, and it's mm, so mm. unbelievably effective so how many film scores is this now under your belt right oh i, d I don't know um i don't know so, so it's that many <laughs> it's I, I, I don't, well it's not that many it's probably between eight and ten something like okay well that. I'm that's, not, I'm that's not actually sure you know it's that's a few, pretty right? impressive yeah. yeah it's impressive and um you think uh, and as it goes with this you i think you're probably in that snowball effect now you know one one you, the su success gets you you know another one and another one well is maybe there... i mean uh, the thing is i never i never really expected to be doing a documentary about boxing you know mm. a sport effectively a sports documentary mm. even though it's as i said before it's really not quite it's not really like that but um you know maybe maybe i don't know maybe we'll do more right we'll have to see um as ever you know as uh, as soon as i'd finished the uh score for in the company of kings raven's album started so um and even that you know came about quite in in quite a surprising way well you're just on a sort of final word in this segment uh you know aid when your name is mentioned, you know, on my channel or in conversations. Uh, it's always associated with the likes of Wilder, Reznor. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying that not to blow smoke up your ass, so to well, speak. That's but it's, okay, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, and, uh, I'm quite happy to be the the, the cheap British. <laughs> no, that's I fine. Can I can live with that. I think I, I joked with you when when we interviewed you and Gary on the uh, Intruder thing which we'll talk about just a bit later I, I think i referred to you both as a couple of forrest gumps and what i meant by that was if you've watched the forrest gump movie forrest gump's like this genius but he's so he, he goes oh he, he doesn't big up anything he does but everything he does is very good <laughs> a couple of forrest gumps i think yeah yeah we and, are definitely that and there was there was yeah and there was a bit of there, some people after the video, they said, Vaughn, did you just call Gary Newman Forrest Gump?" I, said, <laughs> I, th I, I think I did, but it came from a, it came from a good place. Yeah, yeah, it came from a place of love. It came mate. from yeah, a good we know place. That. We know well, that. listen, let's talk now a little bit about uh, Raven, who's um, I, th I think you and I uh, sort of been keep, you know we've been keeping in touch, you know, with with text and stuff. Yeah. Um, the last time we were in touch was when she uh, she did a support slot for Gary in uh, was it was at the Electric Ballroom in Camden. That's right. Yep. And you were on stage rocking those keyboards. Yep. And I unfortunately missed you. What They changed the schedule. They moved everything an hour ahead. So I wanted to come and see you, but everything moved an, an hour ahead. This is probably a, an obvious question. I mean, obviously, Ravens uh, started working on stuff. And, uh, you know, the obvious choice was to, you know, was to, you know, 
dad oversees it and oh, well, I'll come to aid. And um, it's interesting because certainly some of the stuff I've heard, it's, it's, you know, it's very dark. It's, it's very grown up really. You know, she, she's kind of beyond her years in lyrical content. Is that fair to say? Uh, there are a lot. Yes, absolutely. Very grown up. Look, I, I mean, so, you know, sort of telling the story as it was from kind of day one, you know, Raven had, Gary had been telling me that Raven had been writing these songs. And this is probably when she was 17, 18, maybe. Mm. And uh, we were somewhere, I think Gary and Jem were over here visiting family or whatever. And, and um, I went to see them and, and uh, Raven really wanted, I think Raven really wanted to play me something, uh, but was too nervous to do it. And, and uh, you know, in the end, I said, look, just don't worry about it. You know, just, just send it me. You know, if, if, if I don't like it, it's fine. It doesn't matter. What does it matter? You know, anyway, she sent me, I think she sent me my reflection, which is the new single coming out, coming out on Friday. Um, 23rd of February. 23rd of Feb. Yeah. Um, I think that was the first one she sent me. I could be wrong there. Sorry, Raven, if, if that's wrong, but, um, uh, and I'm just like, oh my God, you know, this, I've been in situations before to put this into context i've been in situations before where friends will, will play you stuff um and uh you you know you really hope that it's, it's good yeah you know, please be good please be good so you know what i mean that kind of situation is that saying anyway, never tell your friend the truth is that the same <laughs> so so, the, so it, anyway you know she sent it me or played it me or whatever i can't remember which and it it's just oh my god you know this is this is ridiculous you know you know her voice is absolutely incredible you know it's just incredible you know and lyrically my reflection i think was the one of the first songs on this batch of 15 that are going to be going to be coming out uh one was one of the first ones and and um you know lyrically she's telling the story on it vocally you, you know she's incredible but Honestly, I swear to God, wait till you hear the other stuff. You know, it, it she she blows my mind. You know, I'm so proud of her. Um, not just as someone I've known, obviously since she was a baby. Someone I used to look after her sometimes when she was a kid. You know, when when me and Gary had been left on our own to fend for ourselves. You know, whatever. <laughs> uh, and and now and going on holiday to Florida with them in. 2008 you know as i mentioned that photo and then you know for her to be sending me these songs hmm. it, it's just mind-blowing you it's know like, it's and, almost like a fatherly pride in a way kind of uh, you know i'm just you know it's it's incredible you know i, I don't i don't know i i find i find it difficult to articulate just how proud of her i am you know and and it but it's not just like it's not just oh i'm proud of my friend as an artist as a songwriter as a singer mm. um as a lyric you know lyrically it is mind-blowing you know for her age and bear in mind that she was 18 19 when she wrote, wrote this stuff yes and it's i mean just incredible most of the stuff i heard for the first time was obviously when i couldn't come and see your show live i watched some of the video footage back on youtube and you know yeah. even on some you know on, on, it's mainly done on camera phones and even on that, I could hear there was a, a depth, like a real depth to it. You know, it's like, you know, I, I, and I don't mean to sound condescending to anyone who's 20 years old, but all I'm saying is obviously as the older we get, the more life experience we've got. And just there was like, there's a maturity there that is beyond her, yeah. her years. I mean, was, you know, my reflection, which is the new single, you know, mm. the first single, mm. uh, the second single, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to say what it is, so I won't, just in case. Yeah. But the second single is polar opposite of my reflection in terms of you know sort of w w you know what it is and uh, and everything and it it would she is so uh she is so clever in the way that she puts puts together uh, melodies and also her her voice as well um i always listen to some of the songs that she sent me i'm i was on the phone to gary i was going i don't know where this song's going you know you know, pre, you know sometimes when somebody sends you something 
you kind of know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, it's got it's some, some, sometimes it's linear, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, it's, it's songs are supposed to be that, you mm -hmm. know, but Raven would send me some stuff. You know, there's a song, there's a, there's a song on the album, um, called beautiful player and, uh, which we didn't perform live. And I had no idea that it was going to go where it goes. Mm when I listen to it and you go, Oh my God. And her voice, you know, her voice is so strong, so mm. mature. Mm. Um, it is, it, you know, it's unbelievable. I, as I say, it's unbelievable. So she is definitely taken in her father's footsteps in terms of writing these monumental songs at a very young age. Um, and I have every faith that I think she's going to be a superstar. I genuinely think she's she, because she's got something that no one else has. I think in terms of, you know, she she's obviously influenced by her dad. She's obviously influenced by industrial music, but she's also influenced by, uh, you know, Nirvana or Billie Eilish or, or whatever. So there's this vast array of flavors on the on the album i think it's unique you know in the you know i can't think of anyone else who has this kind of gothic mm. as you can see from the photos you know mm. she's she you know this sort of gothic vibe to her but 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 it's super it, it is super edgy you know and i can't and, and um I, I i honestly think given the background given the story attached to it given the songs most importantly um i i just think she's she's got the world at her feet i, I really do well um I, I think you know the way you've you've just spoken really really sincerely then i think i think a lot of people can be very interested and i certainly am very interested to hear the whole album now as well and and, and also especially the fact that you're involved with it age you know because i yeah i mean you know my reflection which is the one that everyone will have heard by now mm. uh is probably the is probably the most uh numinesque perhaps mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. um the next one i think i'm not sure which one the next one is but it's a choice of two which is why i'm not committing yeah uh, to saying which it is because I, I, we uh, we, don't, we don't know yet well i don't know yet uh, or I, I probably do know but my head's been anyway uh well, and, and anyway you know it it, it, it it's it's anthemic you know but it's anthemic in a uh, um, unconventional kind of way female you know it's yeah. it's like it, i i think it it will become a female anthem it's one mm. of those tracks mm. you know and mm. um she's great you know we filmed the video for the three songs um a few um maybe two months ago something like that in london um and um she i have to mention as well her work work ethic in terms of um when we were recording the album you know uh we recorded the vocals in brighton uh for about seven or eight songs in the space of three days and um she was absolutely incredible we i had a work in from you know bear in mind this is at that point a 19 year old who didn't like to get out of bed until two o'clock you know i had her up out of bed you know she was out of bed that gary would you know gary would like go and wake her up and she was out of bed and then i'd meet her in the lobby and we'd be go and we'd be in the studio at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'd work until say seven at night or whatever and she never you know she didn't complain once she, her voice is incredible mm. um and she was just a joy to work with you know every time and um even when we did the live performances as well you know she was really nervous about it as was i by the way um mm not because of her but because it would have, been, would have been the first time i'd been on stage for a long time you know and um but it, putting all that together for her uh again you know it was just brilliant and in terms of her uh likeness to her father you know she absolutely knows what she wants just like gary you know she you know she knows what she wants yeah. and it's brilliant i love you know as i've mentioned to you before gary and i have a uh a relationship without boundaries in terms of um if something's shit he'll tell me it's shit if i if i don't like something i'll tell him i'm not sure about that whatever and it doesn't matter I, I that's important told... that's yeah important. I, I know I mean, so many bands who've fallen apart because they don't have that honesty exactly um and 
and it's the same with Raven. She knows her mind, uh, and it you know it's it's brilliant. You know, um, so you know a couple of tracks on the album. She told me the kind of vibe she was going for, and I think out of thirty out of fifteen tracks, I think there was a couple where as happens with gary you know we we don't quite get it right we're, we're not quite going in the right direction to, to start with and she absolutely knows where she wants to go with something and it's brilliant you know it's 15 really... 15 tracks on the album uh Aiden. well there's 15 tracks that we've i'm not saying there's 15 tracks on the album but there's okay. 15 tracks that we've recorded together okay oh i see okay so the no, single's 15... coming out on february the 23rd which is friday and the album is that well, the, we don't know yet you don't, don't know, know yet. okay we're, we right. don't know yet. Um, it's early. Do it's early day, you know. But we've done. We've recorded fifteen songs together, um, and we'll, we'll. It's too early to to say what's going to happen just yet. But um, um, I know, you know there are the 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 first single is February twenty third this Friday, um, and then there will be another single to follow that. I'm not, not sure when though. Okay, no, that's interesting. And um, slightly off topic, but still relevant. It's interesting because when Gary released My Name is Ruin, yeah, My Name is Ruin, um, yeah. and then he had, he had Persia singing with him. It was yeah. interesting. Um, so in my mind, it would have always been Persia, who, and maybe she may in the future, I don't know, may release music. But then all of a sudden from left field, it was Raven that appeared, you know, as, as the, 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 the one to release music. So... Um, yeah does that make did that come as a shock to you well i did a track for persia which which has never seen the light of day okay um a few years ago um and you know again it's it's yeah it's brilliant it's fantastic you know um but uh it was it, I, I you know i just did that um it was a, a a track that was particularly personal to persia and and uh and we did that and she loved it and it was great and that that's that you know never, we, never released there it wasn't there was not a plan no there was never a plan with it it was just ah. we did you know it was just something we did together and it was great it was great maybe it will see the light of day at some point i don't know but well, uh, and then you know out of the blue um gary had mentioned that raven had been you know, you know writing some stuff mm. but i never really thought much of it of it yeah um other than oh that's great you know um but then you know when when that first track came and and then it more came and then they they are of such high caliber that i'm just going oh my god you know this, this is this is really turning into something you know now l l let's just talk about and as i say we could we could like we did last time we could do a whole gig talk segment on this and i may come back <laughs> anyway That's fine. Uh, um what I want, I want to just sort of ask you about, obviously, when she sent you her songs as demos, were they sparse? Was it a voice and a piano or were they, were they more developed? Um, they were, they would, they would, they would, um, develop. She would send me demos in the same way that Gary did really. So and, did and, she produce the demos herself or did Gary help her or, or did he not, I, I, was he not I, involved? I honestly, I, no, no, I think Gary, uh, I think in the very early days, so mm. we're probably talking 16, 17 years old or whatever. Mm. Gary would, I think Gary showed her how to how to put stuff together in Logic. But I see. After that, you know, she's a very quick learner. After that, everything came from Raven. Yeah. So she would send me stuff, um, which would be, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe some some contact patches or whatever, and 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 uh, you know, all you with the synth noises that she liked and uh, all this kind of stuff. But and then we'd. As ever, we worked remotely a lot. Of course, she's in LA. I'm I'm over here, but she did come over here, here a lot as well, and we worked together on stuff. Um, and again, I, I come back to that thing of knowing what she wants, you know. So it, it's all about communication. You know, Gary and I communicate a lot over FaceTime. We I did the same with Raven. We talk about what she wants, and as the process goes with Gary leave me alone with it for a couple of weeks. I'll see what I can come up with. And then we get a basic feel and she either, she approves it or she doesn't. And then we develop it together, you know, and, and, and that's kind of how it works, you know? 
And of course, you know, if we say working with Gary, you know, you guys are well established, you've been doing it for a long time, and I believe you'll probably be working on the next body of work soon. Uh, but, you know, you guys are so in resonance with each other, you, you, you kind of know, I don't want to say in a predictable way, but you, you kind of, you know, you've been doing this for so many, uh, so many years. So with Raven coming here now, was there like a conscious effort not to have any expectation and not to, because, you know, something I said earlier on, um, uh, I may have said it in a video, it's very difficult when you're in the position that Raven's in now. It, it's a double-edged sword because there will, there's always the people that are beginning, oh yeah, because you're Gary's daughter. And that happens to a lot of people who have a famous, it happened to Paul McCartney's daughter, who was a fashion designer. I mean, she's amazing, but yeah, you know, there was always that, you know, cause you, th there's that shadow that you've got to always try and hopefully, and certainly from what I've heard and what you've said, that's not the case here. This is just a genuine, you know, rogue talent. Um, so with that, was it difficult or did the song, did, did you know, she obviously sent you the demos. Was it easy for you to sort of find a direction for it or was there a lot of back and forth? Sorry if that's a long question. Um, it was easy to be okay. honest. Um, you know, the demos were very, uh, as, as with Gary's, you know, they're well, they're, they're well formed, you mm. know, and so my job as producer obviously is to, uh, turn that I, I, my stuff as well and, and, and turn it into a commercially releasable product. Mm. Um, but there's so much discussion that goes on, mm. you know, uh, to, to work that out and, and experimentation that goes, goes on, on both sides, you know, um, and it, it, I understand what you're saying about the, the Gary thing and the expectations. Mm. Uh, I deliberately didn't want it to sound like a Gary Newman album. Um, that's unavoidable on a couple of, on a couple, in a, a couple of examples, because a couple of the songs are very, uh, Newman-esque in, in the way that, that they're written, um, and probably in the way they're produced, but I deliberately sort of, um, steered away from the, you know, the polymoog style anthemic strings or whatever, you know, because it would just, uh, she's got her own sound anyway. It just wouldn't Good. sound yeah. right. The songs are different, you know, mm. um, but obviously Gary said, dad, you know, of course the, of course there's going to be an influence, you know, um, but equally that she's, she, you know, she's influenced by other things as well. And, and, um, uh, you know that really shines through but as i said before you know i think she's occupying a space entirely of her own um and the songs are strong enough and lyrically strong enough as well um for her to be judged on her own and and, and not as gary newman's daughter i get that it's a double-edged sword that can be both advantageous and and not um obviously the, i'm sure she's going to get bombarded with questions when she does her press stuff um but that that that's so what you know yeah. it's fine it, it, you know it's fine it, it because the songs are so strong and because her voice is so strong um she has i, I don't think that she'll be judged on her own on on, on the merits of the Strengths. stuff and yeah and, yeah absolutely on the, on the on the strength of the record she'll be judged on that not on her daddies and also uh, you mentioned earlier aid it's uh it, um, and i've been in this position as well if you if, if a friend sends you something you know there's yeah. that saying there's that saying never tell your friend the truth and uh um no nah, i'm not like that I'll, you know i'd rather be honest and uh, i think in this particular case they, they may, I'm, I'm asking the question here, there may have been some degree of apprehension in the beginning where, okay, Gary, who's my longtime music partner, um, his daughter is sending me a song. I really hope this is good. And and turns out it's exceeded your expectations. <laughs> yes. And the fact that you can put your stamp to it, it wasn't a case of, it certainly wasn't a case of, oh, this is my daughter, make her a star kind of thing. It's really no, and also on its own merits. That, you yeah, know, Raven, Raven yeah. as well is... Um, you know, um, as I said before, you know, a family friend for 20 years, 
you know, and Gary and Gemma longer, you know, and, and it's, uh, um, so, but, but what the thing is when, when the first one came, it exceeded my expectations, you know, and I was relieved, pleased, <laughs> excited, happy. But then when the next lot batch came in and I'm, they're even better. So there's, consi it, there's consistency. Of, it's yeah. just consistent. Yeah. And some of it is, you know, f just mind blowing, you know, it's so good. I'm such a fan of hers, you know, and, and that is a lovely thing that, you know, my friend's daughter and Raven's, you know, my friend, but also now the artist that I've been producing, you know, and I genuinely absolutely love what she's doing. Uh, you know, it's that is a lovely position for us all to be in, you know? Yes. Because I'm sure Gary wanted uh the working relationship between raven and i to be healthy and to be productive and and good and it turned out even more than that and uh raven's happy because she trusts me and uh, um there's no bullshit between us you know um and that that's obviously really really good and uh and really helped the process and i'm really happy because i'm getting to produce this thing i the this thing I like, I really believe in, you know, um, and I believe in, I believe in her massively. What, uh, did Gary have any sort of, um, not say, but he, 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 did he give his opinion or did he sort of just stand yeah, yeah, in the background? No, 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 he did. Oh, he did. Oh. Um, uh, and that's fine. You know, that's great. So did Jem, you know, that's totally, yeah. totally great. Um, I, you, I, I, I really encourage that kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know, I'm not pressured. Raven wrote the songs, you know, mm -hmm. I've produced them, you know, they're not, they're her songs, the, the, the lyrical content, the melodies, um, it's all down to her, you know, she, she, it's her, what she's, what she wants to say, not what I want to say. I help her to say what she wants to say, you know, uh, and make that, as I said before, you know, it's my job to pull it all together, pull all the musicians together um and yes gary and jem gave their opinions um and that's brilliant i, I as i said before I, I love that and it's healthy um and there are a couple of occasions where jem, raven completely disagreed with what gary was saying and we went raven's way and that was great you uh, know. that's interesting yeah yeah that's really healthy yeah, yeah that's brilliant yeah um, that is. and then gary gary would give his opinion on the production which luckily was mostly uh you know incredibly positive raven was the same and then on any of the tracks where it wasn't quite working i as i say you know i don't my my, my having worked with gary for 20 years or whatever it is now you know probably not that long but whatever it is um you know my, my skin is thick when it comes to this and i don't take it personally you mm -hmm. know? and the trust thing as well from working with Gary and with Raven is that they 100% know that any decision that is made or is always done in the best interest of the, of the music that we're working on. You know, there's never any ego involved. Yeah. There's never like, Oh, I'd, I need to put my stamp on this. It's not that at all. It's, it's what does Raven or Gary want this track to be? You've um, always been very, you've always been very clear on that, Aid. Yeah, Absolutely. and uh, and uh, and it's the same with Raven. Um, of, uh, you know, obviously, obviously, if you do something and you think it's amazing, and then and then they go, um, "Oh no, I don't like that." You go, "For fuck's sake, oh, that's great!" <laughs> but then then that's it. That, that's yeah. that's that's it. You go, okay, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that happened on Intruder. It happened on Savage. Happened on Splinter. It doesn't. You know, other you know, Gary, Gary w w always denies it, but you know, sometimes he he has raised his voice on a few occasions that we go oh, fuck you. like that, and then we just smile. You know, I just smile and go right, that's fine. We just change it. You know, it's all good. Gary's going to be coming to the UK now to be doing some shows. Um, will Raven be supporting? And if so, will you be appearing I, on I stage? Know, you, I, 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 I genuinely don't. Uh, know. These are all PR uh, things. Okay. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know. Um, okay. I don't. I, I, uh, w would I be part of it? Um, 
what well, I certainly helped to put it together. Yeah, mm. um, I must say that when we did the um, when we did the electric ballroom shoes shows, I was extremely concerned about being twice the age of every other band member, <sighs> um, and um, uh, yeah, that that I was, I almost said no because of that. Um, you know something you... Aid, that is something that I always say to people that, that is just something that's inside your head and i'm really not mm -hmm. trying to blow smoke up your rc you know you look great I, I still i still texted you the following day and i said you you really rocked those keyboards you looked great and um you know there's this whole thing about aging and i know gary's another one he hates birthdays you know we all get to a stage we hate birthdays but at the end of the day i think like if if i can just speak freely someone like gary the, the reason he's not cringy, even though he thinks he's really old, is because he, is, he always considers, and he's always said this in interviews, he considers his age and, and, and then he leans into that gracefully. You know what I mean? He's not sort of, um, he, you know, he's not sort of doing, uh, I don't know, teeny bop moves and stuff like that. So the point I'm trying to make is, um, you know, as Gareth Jones, we're talking about this as well. He said, you know, rock and roll is a is a new art form, you know, and it's, that's why, you know, it, I started in the sixties really. So you've yeah. got like rocks in, and, and there was a time you'd go, Oh my God, I'm not in my twenties. I can't be a rock star anymore. That's all kind of changing that's, now. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah, and you know what I'm saying is, and it's like, um, and that's reassuring because, you know, there's this thing where, you know, pop stars, you, you've surpassed your age. The truth is you write better songs as you become older, cause you have better life experience. Also, as you get older, um, you know, you've got more things to say. So as long as it's done gracefully and you, you know, as I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm saying this in absolute sincerity, like you on the stage there, you know, you were dressed appropriately. People know you, you've got respect. So it's like, oh, that's Aid Fenton. No one's going to yeah, look at you. I dressed by Raven. Okay, okay. <laughs> you were dressed by Raven. That's <laughs> fine. But the point I'm trying to make is you weren't, you weren't, you weren't dressed like Buck's Fizz. It wasn't, you know what I mean? So I always yeah. say to people, just get this out of your head, man. No, you, you, no one you, sees it. No one yeah, sees no, it. You're right, mate. You're you right. Know? So you, you, and it no. became, you know, I, I, I became the butt of the joke anyway, and that, and that <laughs> made it, that actually made it better, you know? Well, as I said, I'm going to uh, say, uh, you, you do have quite a, you have got a keen fan base, certainly in my subscriber base. So, um, oh, good. you know, well, you really nice. don't have to, do, uh, th these are all ideas that are yeah, as we are. The, most of these things are in our head. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But um, I am, as I say, I will hopefully if you, because um, I live in Estonia now. But um, if you know, if 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 I'm in the UK and you're playing, I'd I'd love to come and see, and I'll make sure I get there in time to see you, because I was quite gutted about that. Um, I want to sort of um, okay. So just just to summarize that, that's that's Raven's single uh, on the twenty third Friday the twenty third. Uh, that's the that's the debut single. Yeah. Uh, it's the debut single. That's right. Um, yeah. With more to come. Released, released by BMG, February 23rd. Please download it. Please stream it. Please um, give Raven all the support. We will. Um, we will. Yeah. We will. Definitely. I'll do my part as well in, in, in whatever way I can. Now we, we do need to uh, address the elephant in the room. Sorry, Gary, to call you an elephant. This is a guy that shows no signs of... I mean, the work ethic is just relentless and i feel sorry for you it's <laughs> because it's just like boom 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 you know it's it's just tour after tour after tour i mean his energy is just so uh incredible it, it's it's off the charts it really yeah. is so i want to just ask a question uh because obviously i said i was interviewing you and of course my inbox got flooded so i said look this is not that this is not a ask aid ask aid fenton anything although we could do that if you wanted to one day <laughs> that's entirely up to you but um something that came up was when we spoke last time there was talk about re-releasing Sacrifice, Exile, and Pure. Now, is that something that's sort of been pushed far to the back now because of so many projects? No, no not at all. Um, uh, they are two-thirds ready, uh, more than that, actually. But um, uh, Pure and um, Sacrifice are mixed and mastered already. Really? Um, yeah, Exile wow. is almost finished. Um Obviously, I did Raven's album, so um, finishing X, I went on the back burner slightly. Um, whilst Gary's on tour with Ministry, uh, she'll be finishing off Exile. Um, so, no, absolutely not. Um, they're absolutely part of the release plans um, still coming. You know, a lot of people, there's so much, that, uh, you know this, Vaughan, but so, there's so much that goes on sort of industry wise and, and oh, behind yeah. the scenes with planning releases and 
you know you don't just go into a studio record something and it's out next week you know it doesn't work like that you know there's a big plan in place for a lot of stuff gary's got a massive catalog Mm. so everything has to have a have its place and there would be absolutely no point in releasing um you know all these things within a, a few weeks of one another so it's got to be sort of strategically placed i understand why people are getting impatient with it um but that's um, you know unfortunately that's just part of it um uh and and also with you know we've been working on the live uh mixes as well so wembley um which i've just finished mixing uh gary approved it yesterday so that's going to be mastered this week um uh the dvd the dvd slash video for it um will be uh will be coming out soon as well as i presume um all of the audio side of it, vinyl, CD, or whatever. Or on, on oh, uh, this was the this was the Wembley, was this? this yeah, was this Wembley twenty two. A couple show, of yeah. years, yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's being released on vinyl as well. I, 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 pres- I again, don't quote me on it because I don't know. Okay. I would, I would assume it would do, um, okay. because it's Wembley. Um, but then I've also been mixing um, the Electric Ballroom performances as well. Okay. So that, they were all re- that was recorded. Uh, Gary's just released a vinyl. Uh, single which i mixed uh of the, the live performance called gary it i think it's called gary newman 1000 and prayer for the unborn and splinter were uh on a double a side mm. um so that's just i think that was for the american ministry shows um i'm not sure whether they're available outside of the us but anyway so that's coming out soon uh with raven's performance too um I don't know when though. Uh, again, it's all got to be placed. Um, the acoustic show that Gary did that I've just I finished mixing that. So that's oh, that ready. was that was recorded and it's going to be released as well. Yeah, uh, and oh. then um, what else have I mixed? Oh, and then there was uh, a ra- there was a show that Gary did at the Roundhouse just before COVID, um, which I've just mixed as well. So all of these things are going to see the light of day, but wow. which is why I'm saying about exile the three dark albums you know that's everything has to have its place and and so there's a big release plan for the forthcoming year or two or year and a half when you know gary and i'll be working on the new album well wonderful please keep me in the loop and of course when i was in your studio there you you played me i had the uh, i've teased people with this on you played me my jesus from the original and then you played the um you know the re-recorded version and um you know uh, I've said this before, you know, you've got not not me preaching, but I'll, I'll, let, let's be random. I heard Nick, let's, let's be really random. I heard Nick Kershaw, you know, he did that song, Wouldn't It Be Good To Be In yeah. Your Shoes. I was listening to Spotify once and he, he released a new version of it. And um, it sounded technically better, you know, it, it, it was more modern, but it, it was missing something, you know, it, maybe it's just that, that thing called demoitis where you you become accustomed to the original sound Mm -hmm. and what i loved about uh, sacrifice is because of you know it's a part of gary's history it was done on a in a porter studio we had no money you know Gemma said get back into the studio do it as a hobby but all of those factors gave it its sound you know so if you compare it to the current day aid fenton mixed production of course it's it's inferior to that however it had a sonic and a vibe to it and the point I'm trying to make is when you redo things, you can sometimes undo that. What I said was what you guys did was when I heard the, my Jesus, it's like you retained that, that nuance and, and, and character of the original album, but it's better. You know what I mean? It, 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 you haven't, you haven't made it so pristine that you've lost the essence. If, if you know what I'm trying to say. So it's was that important. something you were conscious of doing when you, when 100%. you did this? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, what, I absolutely didn't want it to be like, oh, it's just AIDS versions of yeah. Pure or whatever. It's not because it's not that at all. You know, we we replayed everything. We were absolutely authentic to the original. Um, and, you know, all the vocals have been re-recorded. Um, so, the, you know, obviously everything is recorded in pristine quality. Of course. Um, but it's important, as you say, for all three albums to retain uh, or try to retain what what it is that made made them those albums um and so it's really when i played you my jesus mm. you know 
I just basically wanted it to be like listening to the original, but on steroids and in perfect yeah. clarity. And, and that it was. Is, that, that's what you're trying to do, you know? Yes. So Sacrifice is a very loop-based album, for example. Mm. Pure, not so much, but but Sacrifice definitely is, and Exile to a certain degree. Um, and so I, I wanted to make sure that uh, if I rebuild those loops or if, because obviously a lot of them you can't even find anymore. The yes. loops that were That's being difficult used, to know. do to reverse well, I did have the, I have the multi-tracks though, so I can okay. at least, at least them, uh, at least, um, at, l at least listen to them to see how they're constructed or whatever. So, but it was very important that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to replace, uh, like if you take Deadliner from Sacrifice, for example, it's just a loop and Gary, Gary's vocal and the sound, you know, but that's what makes it brilliant. Yes. So I don't want to, I don't want to take away from that, you know, so, um, but I do want it to be in crystal clear clarity. clarity. That's where the challenge for you as the producer, because you see, you've got to make those decisions. I Gary, yeah. if anything's probably too close to it. So you have to make these decisions. And I guess here, here's the question. So with the redoing of these, I know it was Jagged, Jagged was just remixed. It wasn't re-recorded, but well, the Jagged's other one, Jagged was what it was album that I produced, wasn't it? So yeah, that, that, so that's right. That's with, right. So, but but Gary mixed it at a time when that's right. His hearing was starting to go. Yes. Um. So so what we would like to do with Jagged, well, what we are doing with Jagged is we we're not going to we're not going to reproduce Rip. it. I'm going to mix it. So yeah. again, you know, that will sort of have its own lease of life. But the three albums, Sacrifice, Exile, and Pure, you know, um, to 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 retain i didn't want it to be heard as if it were a remix a get an aid remix of gary's old tracks yes yes i would hate that as a fan you know um and so it's just really important to be as authentic as possible um and just make the original versions of that through re-recording sound as good as they could possibly sound did you okay and and in re-recording these three albums sacrifice exile and pure did you at any stage use any of the original sounds from the original records or is it completely done from so scratch sacrifice sorry sacrifices uh i use some of the original parts okay. and pure and exile um i we they were they were so i would get steve in or tim or whatever um and uh rebuild those myself and there are new vocals on all three albums so the re-recorded vocals on all three albums Yes, a question that's just popped into my head now because this is um, and it's you know, it's not a trick question. It's just a, 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 a something that um, that people have different schools of thought on, and that is I know Depeche Mode, for instance, when they went to produce, they went one of their albums. They decided they don't want to go to a producer who's a fan of theirs because they want him to have a completely uh, you know an, or, or, you know, objective view of it. I mean, you're obviously a fan of Gary Newman, and um, I personally feel. And there are different schools of thoughts. I feel that that's a good thing because that gives you a certain level of care towards it. Um, but then there are other people who say, no, if you're a fan, you tend to push it down too many, you, too much of a predictable route. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I, I understand both sides of the argument. Yeah. You know, I just know that, well, I think having been a fan since 1979 and having posters of Gary on my wall when I was a kid, you know, like, like all the other people, it was a certain a certain sound that Gary had that flipped my switches, you know, and, and it, it's that I, I, you know, I just, I just knew that when I started producing Gary to sort of, um, make it sound like an authentic Gary Newman album, I believe that being a fan gave me a bit, uh, some knowledge about that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm always trying to move it on, though, you know. Um, so even though, as I spoke about before, even though on Intruder, you know, I dug the CR78 out, you know, it was never like, oh, I'm just trying to make this sound like dance. Or like I'm a pastiche trying to make it or something. Like remind yeah. me to smile or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? It's never yeah, yeah. like that. It's mm. it's like, does it fit with it within the track around this this kind of modern sound? And Gary would... Uh, would absolutely never green light anything. You know, if, if I got a polymoog in the studio and, and use Voxy Minor on the next album, he would probably never ask me to do anything again. But, yeah. um, he, he, we, you know, he, luckily me and him have the same taste in music. So um, pretty much everything we 
do together you know we it blokes both of our boats but in terms of me being a fan i i, I think it's uh advantageous to be honest um and and i certainly don't want to i don't want to repeat you know i don't want the i don't we, we wouldn't want the next album to be like intruder you know gary knows what he wants the next album to be already and we've talked about it um and i think it'll be quite a significant um departure from from intruder you know well yeah because there were uh, i think the working title for this next body of work was it intruder 2 or was that just a we a were originally when covid happened we were going to follow up intruder um with another one it just never happened um i don't know no particular reason why it just didn't happen um and so yeah i think the new album is going to be completely new nothing to do with intruder Okay, well, that's very interesting. I, 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 I don't even, I don't even think I've heard that anywhere yet. So that, that's very exciting. Um, yeah, I do follow Gary on his Patreon page. Uh, so he, yeah. he does those, he does those Q and A's and stuff and everything. So that's exciting. Well, I mean, the, the, the work ethic is, is, is relentless. You know what I mean? And it's, 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 it's tours. It's, and as you've just mentioned there, and then I don't know where you've got the time to do that. You know, as, as well as doing. That. Yeah, the, the the boxing music and everything well obviously you know yeah but i mean because i'm not in the band these days you know yeah. um if i were to go and now and now go on tour as tim and steve and david um and um all the other uh, and the, all the other members of the crew are about to do uh i i probably wouldn't have a chance to do all these things um you know, I do. I do miss being on tour with. I was going to ask you that. All, do you they're miss all it? really close friends? You know, and and I and I miss the camaraderie massively. But um, you know, since I was a kid, you know, it's kind of like I, the the thought of being away from him for two months or three months or whatever um, uh, means I probably wouldn't wouldn't want to. Um, I don't know. Maybe that will change in time but but at the moment I, you know that's how i feel but um in terms of gary going on tour he's going to you know he's doing what is it i don't know 40 dates with ministry or whatever and and then he comes over here and, he, and he's doing his pleasure principle and replica shows oh he's mad you know the the energy that that man's got uh and considering his diet is just ridiculous know, we spoke about his diet being terrible wasn't it well it's different yeah, yeah so you, well you you've changed your diet you've said i have thanks to you yeah thanks to me i'll, I'll take all the credit well that was yeah. because um I, I must admit you know when, when when we had the photos taken when we took our last interview i think yeah. we we're all a bit caught i thought you looked great i looked at myself i thought oh i'm getting a bit podgy there but <laughs> well i thought the same mate about myself so I, yeah, yeah yeah i changed my diet i didn't want to lose weight or anything i just wanted to, i just changed my diet to eat more healthily and that's what mm. i've been doing it does help you cut out the sugar and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah so yeah, you've got your hands full, and uh, and uh, yeah, bitten off more than you can chew with Mister Newman. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's, <laughs> there's worse jobs to have, though, isn't there? Absolutely. I said, what, what was your first job? You used to make signs, is that right? I, that was my yeah. That was yeah. my when I left school. Yep, yeah, I used to make signs, and then uh, ridiculous. All these years later, um, look, you know, look at what's happening. Uh, there's a saying, uh, Ada goes, "Never meet your heroes," and. Um, what would you oh, say that, to I that? don't agree with that one. I also don't agree with that. <laughs> no, that's right. But, um, well, listen, mate, listen, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, there's so much more to speak about. I would love to come back on um, with a chat with you, either if I'm in the UK again or or on Zoom, where we can talk about geek talk. I'd love to hear more about some of the uh, processes used in the boxing movie sure. and creating Raven's album. Yeah, 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 of course. No problem. But listen, thank you so much. I mean, that's some golden information there regarding everything. I appreciate your time, and no uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks a lot, mate. All the best with the single. See you. Also, brother. Cheers, man.